um, this proposal <coughs> does not go into effect for 48 months. So essentially we'd have about a year of operating this program before we would have to be beginning to operate something under the Affordable Care Act. <coughs> and one of the things that we do know about this proposal that is not in keeping with the Affordable Care Act is that the Affordable Care Act says that people will not have out-of-pocket costs at 400% of poverty of over 10% of their income. And I'm not gonna offer my amendment today because you haven't been willing to accept it, so I know that it wouldn't be adopted here today. But uh, at 275% of poverty, clearly the Affordable Care Act would require out-of-pocket that would be far less than 10%. I think we could probably agree on that. So I don't think that this is a good transition to whatever the federal government is going to have for people through an exchange. I, um, I also uh, think it's important for people to read the fiscal note. And the fiscal note says that um, that this benefit is 40% less than the benefit we have in Minnesota Care today. And that is even with uh, the hospital benefit that we have in Minnesota Care today that I think everybody could agree needs to be improved. 40% less. So that means that the participants are gonna have to pay 40% more out of pocket whether it's through a deductible or a copay or however it happens, they're gonna to have to pay 40% more out of pocket. And I don't believe that's affordable for the people that are in this program. And so that means that <coughs> if it's not a hospital that's having trouble collecting from somebody, it'll be a clinic or a pharmacy or some other healthcare provider that is trying to provide services that isn't going to be able to get paid because this person can't afford to pay them. The fiscal note also indicates that there would be a 10% drop in coverage, which stands to reason since probably about half of these people are gonna be denied coverage through an insurance agent and are going to have to try to apply to MSHA. And the harder you make it for people, the more hoops they have to go through the more drop off you get. And so there will be some people that when they're denied coverage the first time will not go through the process of looking for other coverage and will just assume they, they got turned down. I think these are all things in the bill that are troubling to me and I hope they'll be troubling to the other members of this committee and so I don't plan to support this bill today. Senator Hand. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, uh, Senator Berglund, for your comments. And I, um, I, I just, let me try to respond to a couple of the things you mentioned. I, uh, I think we probably are going to end up disagreeing about the virtues and the perhaps even the likelihood of uh, the federal health care structure being impl uh, implemented as it is designed today. I'm more of a skeptic about that. You may be more of an optimist about that. Uh, but uh, we, we won't know for a while what is going to be the future of that federal uh, plan. I believe that we should, for lots of reasons, uh, all hope that it doesn't happen. I think that, uh, from my perspective, we want to try to have the maximum amount of flexibility and the ability to make decisions about health care here in Minnesota. And, uh, and uh, you know probably more than anyone uh, the kinds of constraints that the federal requirements put on our ability to do things in Minnesota that we may think are, are of, of value that uh, make it that we cannot do because of the constraints the federal government has on the current structure. And I see that the proposed expansion would carry us further down that path of tying our hands and driving up costs because of the lack of ability for us to make changes that we think would make financial sense. So I'm not trying to, to essentially structure the bill to accommodate a future uh, event that may or may not occur. Uh, I, as I said, I'm hoping that it doesn't occur. I think there's good reason to believe that it won't happen, at least as it's uh, uh, talked about today. But uh, uh, in my opinion, we would certainly have time between now and 2014 if that eventuality does occur to make adjustments to the plan we're proposing to try to meet whatever constraints that uh, are developed at that point. Um, you mentioned the fiscal note that there are uh, expectations 
patient, there's less benefits. And, and all I would say is, I don't know that that is to suggest that every single person covered under Minnesota Care is going to take the exact same benefits. Those benefits may be provided, and for the purposes of a fiscal note, they're going to be costed out. But I don't know that it's a fair assumption to say that everybody's going to use those things, that people have different health care needs. But what I do know is that when you put into place in a, into a plan a requirement that certain things be covered, there is a cost to do that coverage. And if a person doesn't really need that coverage, they still end up paying for it. And it's one of the things that drives cost in the current structure. And so you could say, well, uh, we don't have a defined benefit structure in the plan. That is correct. Um, and Minnesota Care does. And so you're going to say, say, well, the, the Minnesota Care Plan has got some benefits and you can cost those out and this plan doesn't do that. That's right. We don't define those benefits. But I'm not going to make the assumption that every person that is covered is going to need all those benefits and so therefore they may not need to pay for all those benefits. And I think that's one of the things, the flexibility that this plan offers that Minnesota Care may not. Um, and you're right, there is assumptions in the, in the bill to say that the, there's an expectation that some people will not be successful in getting through an underwriting process. Uh, that does uh, currently would require that they end up into uh, the Minnesota Comprehensive Health Association plan. There is provision in the bill to fund that uh, at a higher level if that were to happen. Uh, we are also working uh, uh, just uh, on this, by the way, here uh, on, a, on a bill to try to reform the EMCHA structure that would we hope make it easier for that transition to occur. Uh, but I don't know that I would presume that if a person is denied coverage uh, through underwriting that they would then say, well, I don't want any coverage at all. I'm not sure that that's the case. Uh, and, I, and I know for purposes of a fiscal note, assumptions have to be made. I believe that they are conservative, uh, to Senator Magnus's point. Uh, I believe that there's every incentive that people would have to, to get some coverage. We're trying to provide a structure to facilitate that. Uh, but uh, I, I understand your point, and uh, I guess I'd like to continue to work with you on this. And hopefully, if, if uh, we do see this uh, uh, situation with the federal government uh, imposing things on us, that we can find some ways to accommodate that going forward. Um, Madam Senator, Chair. Senator Bertland. Madam Chair, Senator Hunt, I don't think that you answered the question that I have about, you know, your concern that hospitals have uh, unreimbursed expenses. What about the other providers in your bill that will have unreimbursed expenses? Because people won't be able to afford to pay the deductible or the copay that, you know, under the fiscal note equals about 40% of what the benefits are today. Senator Han. Uh, Madam Chair and uh, Senator Berglund, again, these are there are assumptions that are made. I'm not sure that I accept the point or the, the assumption that everybody who uh, is going to be uh, uh, paying out of pocket will not be able to pay those things out of pocket. I think that does happen today. I understand that. I think it happens today uh, even under some of the deductibles that Minnesota Care requires that people pay. So I, I understand that there are people who will not pay the cost that they're supposed to pay. I'm not sure that my bill or any bill can can totally solve that problem. Uh, but again, what we are trying to do is, is recognize that the significant cost to providers are the upper end costs and that this is a program that does cover those. Uh, and we believe that on balance that there will be a, uh, a higher degree of reimbursement for costs than under this plan than under Minnesota Care. But 